Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I believe as far as defeating the devil who is our enemy and who attacks us and comes against us. I believe that walking in love, really walking in love with people is the highest form of spiritual warfare that you can do. Welcome to enjoying everyday life and thank you for being with us today. I think what I'm going to share today is going to help every person who hears it. How to get along with people. <laughs> Or actually I'm going to call it uh, how to have successful relationships. You know, let's start by saying people are everywhere. <laughs> There's just a lot of people and they're not all like you. And they don't all do things that you like. How many of you have noticed that some of the people you're around do a bunch of stuff you don't like? <laughs> well, guess what? You also do a bunch of stuff that somebody else doesn't <laughs> like. The key to getting along with people, and this is going to be the main, the main thing that you want to not forget today is to treat other people the way you want to be treated. The Bible calls it the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now just think about that. What, oh my gosh, how wonderful the world would be <laughs> if everybody did that. Well, you know, Christians especially should be able to do it, but we're not even all that good at it. <laughs> It's so tempting to want to do to somebody else what they're doing to you. But do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Be quick to forgive. Boy. If you're going to get mad every time somebody does something you don't like and hold on to it. You're going to be so full of pain and misery. Quick to forgive. <coughs> Difficult to offend. The Bible says love is not touchy. Amen. Believe the best. All the answers are in the Bible. <laughs> love always believes the best of every person. It, it, it's not suspicious. Well, you meant to do that. You know, a lot of times when people hurt your feelings, I would probably say most of the time when people hurt your feelings, they don't even know they did it. They don't even, you know, and maybe you were just having a touchy day. Maybe that day you were wearing all your emotions on your sleeve or you were tired. I mean, if you know that sometimes even just when you're tired, things can affect you differently. And be merciful. Give people mercy. The Bible says that mercy always triumphs over judgment. I wonder how many people are watching right now by TV. And you've got at least... Two people in your life you need to forgive. <laughs> Maybe more. It is truly one of the biggest problems that we have. And you can't love somebody and hate them at the same time. Let that anger go. The Bible says don't let the sun set on your anger. Don't give the devil any such foothold. Wow. Don't approach, don't, don't approach relationships any longer For what the other person can do for you. Instead approach every relationship. From the foundation of being a servant. And a blessing. What about. If in every marriage. Each person. Would get up every morning. And in their prayer time. Say God show me what I can do. For my wife today. Show me what I can do for my husband today. Now, how about that. Or before you come to work, Father, show me how I can be a blessing to the people that I work with today. Show me who I can compliment. Show me who needs to be encouraged. Show me what I have that I'm not even using that somebody else at my office desperately needs. We need to think more outreach-minded rather than what are you going to do for me. And one of the things that gets us in trouble with relationships is thinking about what you don't do for me instead of what you do for me. 
And that can especially be an issue in a marriage. Let your, relationship, let your relationships be an area where you glorify God by treating people the way you believe Jesus would treat them. Now, I got one, two, three, four, five scriptures I'm going to read you real quick here. Matthew 7, 12, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, right away, we're getting into that let's be unselfish thing. Laying down your life means not necessarily doing what you want or what would be good for you, but doing what somebody else wants or what will be good for them. And I don't know about you, maybe you're a lot further along spiritually than I am, I'm sure a lot of you are, but I have to do this on purpose. It's not something that my flesh just says, ooh, goody, let's see how much we can give away and who all we can help today. <laughs> but I believe as far as defeating the devil, who is our enemy and who attacks us and comes against us, I believe that walking in love, really walking in love with people is the highest form of spiritual warfare that you can do. And I really imagine if we really walked in love, the devil wouldn't have too much that he could do to us. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says, Love seeks not her own. 1 Corinthians 10, 24 let no one then seek his own good and advantage and profit, but rather each one of the other, let him seek the welfare of his neighbor. Man, there's some of the best scriptures in the Bible. Do you know the answer to every problem we have is in the Word of God? And I mean, I believe that 100%. If we actually took the things that we hear and actually did them... <laughs> As I tell people all the time, having it underlined in your Bible doesn't mean you're doing it. Philippians 2, 4, let each of you esteem, that means value and respect, and look upon and be concerned for not merely his own interest, but also each for the interests of others. Now that, that doesn't say that you can't care about yourself, but that's not the only thing that we should care about. Come on, this has got to be hitting home with somebody. And then one of my favorite in the Amplified Bible, Mark 8, 34, if anyone intends to follow Christ, how many of you are Christ followers? Okay. Well, here's what you have to do. Let him deny himself, <laughs> forget himself, disown himself, lose sight of himself and all of his own interest but live for the interest of others. Hmm. See, here's the thing. It sounds like, man, that would really be a bummer life. To just give up everything and not, not do what I want and not think about myself and just live my whole life to make other people happy. But here's the thing. If anyone would ever dare to do that, God would take such great care of them. There would be nothing that you would want or need that God wouldn't supply for you if you stop trying to get it all for yourself and instead do for other people. How many have room to improve? <laughs> Me too. Build more windows and fewer walls. <laughs> you know, the minute that somebody hurts you or offends you, if you're sensitive, you can feel like this little invisible wall go up. Because we want to protect ourselves. We don't want to get hurt again. But here's the fact. You can't love people if you're not willing to get hurt. There's no relationship that you can have where you won't get hurt sometimes or somebody will disappoint you. That's why we need to be quick to forgive, merciful, believe the best. And see, we're not... You're not responsible really for how somebody treats you. You're only responsible for how you respond. <laughs> and if we respond properly, God will take care of and deal with the other person. God brings vengeance into our life. 
and he's our recompense and our reward. How many of you think that God could take better care of you than you can take of yourself? Well, if you really believe it, then why don't you put it to a test in your life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Different story. <laughs> Learn to be a little more transparent with people. We usually don't do so because we fear rejection. But if a person rejects us for being honest about ourselves, then they would never be a good friend anyway. <laughs> If you have to be a people pleaser doing everything the other person wants you to do in order to gain their friendship, you will always have to do the same thing to keep their friendship. And eventually, you're going to get tired of it and not want to do that anymore. It's impossible to be what every person in our life wants us to be. So we should decide to be ourselves. I've got a new statement that I'm going to be using Stop saying yes if your heart is screaming no. Be authentic. Take off your masks. Stop pretending and be real. Be totally honest with people simultaneously using wisdom. And that's very important. Being honest doesn't mean that you have to give your opinion on every subject that comes up. Well, I'm just being honest. Well, no, that lacks wisdom. The Bible says only a fool speaks out all of his opinions. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you tell a friend everything about yourself. Some things should be kept just between you and God. Amen. Don't be what I call a gusher. You say, what's that? Most people are going to flee from people who tell somebody their whole entire life story with all the details a few minutes after meeting them. <laughs> I mean, I had the weirdest experience. I was in a nail shop in Florida getting my nails done. And I was sitting at this little table getting my nails dried. And there was a, a, another uh, elderly woman. I say elderly because I'm sure she must have been older than me. <laughs> And she was sitting there, and, you know, I just have to be plain to tell you this, but within two to three minutes, she's telling me how dissatisfied she is with her sex life with her husband because he's getting old. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> now, that's what I would call a gusher, right? <laughs> we don't need to be quite that honest, all right? There are some things you need to keep to yourself. <laughs> Marilyn liked that one don't, don't be honest to the point of stuff like this when I first met you I didn't like you at all that color really does not look good on you I think I might have seen your husband with another woman the other day well if it's you think you might and that's not credible enough to go maybe ruining somebody's relationship. So some people, if you tell them to be honest, they're just not smart enough to know how to use wisdom at the same time. So being honest and, and uh, you know, really open with people doesn't mean that you tell them everything you think. And, you know, now there are some relationships where maybe people invite you into your life. I have a friend who, who says if, you know, if I'm, I'm not really great at fashion, so if I have something on that doesn't look good on me, I'm giving you permission to tell me I want you to tell me. Well, that's another story. But if somebody hasn't done that, then you want to be careful. Don't be afraid to show genuine emotion. <laughs> I like this. Don't say so long when what you really mean is I'm going to miss you a lot because you mean a lot to me. Come on, men. <laughs> Seems to be harder for men to do this than even women. We're a little more emotional. <laughs> I'm really going to miss you. <laughs> Don't let a feeling of embarrassment keep you from giving somebody a compliment because you're afraid that they might reject it. 
It's amazing how friendly somebody feels toward you when you give them a compliment. I saw a woman the other day. I didn't know her. She just was in a place where I was at. And when I looked at her, I thought that her hair color is really pretty. So I've learned when I think things like that to say them. And if I think that outfit you have on looks stupid, I don't say that. <laughs> and don't be a pusher. <laughs> Reach out and then notice how your affection is received. Then move forward or stop depending on the signals you receive. Let's just say that you're a big talker. But you're trying to talk, 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 talk to somebody who wants to be quiet. <laughs> Learn how to read other people's body language and the signals they're giving you. And don't just want to do what you want to do all the time, but do what the other person wants you. Stop trying to give people what you need and find out what they need and give them what they need. Buying gifts for people is a great example. How many of you get things given to you and you think... Why in the world would somebody think I would want this? <laughs> you know why? Because they liked it. And it's what they would want. And so they wanted you to have it. And it's it, it really shows a greater measure of love. Like, I remember a pastor here in town, he wanted to give me a gift, and he actually called my assistant and said, what kind of things does Joyce like? Or what would she need now? And I thought that was so thoughtful because most people are just going to send you something. And that's good. They were thinking of you. They spent some money. But it's better to go just that extra little step and find out if they're actually going to enjoy what you're giving them. Now this, to me, is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, and I think it says so, so much. It's 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Paul said, though I'm free and belong to no one, I've made myself a slave to everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's not something you need to do to be saved. But Paul said, I'm free, I don't, I don't have to do this. But I'm making myself a servant to everyone. To win as many as possible. Now, Paul is talking here about winning people to Christ. But even if we want to just apply this to winning friends. Or being a great example of what it's like to be a Christian. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so I could win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. And so as to win those who are not having the law, to the weak I became weak. I love that. Somebody tells you, Man, I just, I've got this flu that's going around. And <coughs> and, you know, I just feel absolutely terrible. You know, that might not be the time to say, well, you know what? That was coming on me last week, and I just prayed, and God gave me a miracle. <laughs> There's time to give your testimony and time to keep your mouth shut. And when somebody tells you what kind of, you know, that they're having a problem, what they need is compassion right then. And yeah, I mean, it's great to say, you know, can I pray with you? I believe God can do a miracle. But we just need to use more wisdom. To the weak, I became weak. I have become all things to all people so that if by any means possible, I might save some. Now see, to me, what that is, is okay, I'm the way I am. And I can have the attitude, well, this is me, like it or lump it. Or I can say, I, God, I want to be willing to adapt myself 
to whatever somebody else needs. You know, maybe I'm with a big talker and I would rather they just be quiet. But maybe I sense that they just need to talk. So I can sit there 10 minutes and I can listen. My daughter was coming out of a store and um, there was traffic coming by. So she had to wait on the curbside before she could cross to go to her car. And an elderly man was standing there and he was a gusher. So he started gushing and he was just talk, 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 talk. And she was busy, had a lot going on that day, really didn't want to talk, but she sensed, everybody say sensed. <laughs> she sensed that he just needed somebody to talk to, that he was lonely. And she stood there 15 minutes and just let him talk. And I think sometimes when we do things like that, it says more about our character and says more to God than some of the things that we think are great things that we do. God cares about hurting people. What if we would do unto others as we want them to do to us? Now, you know, this is going to be good for you because for today, at least, you're going to be nicer. But you might ought to get the recording and listen again tomorrow. <laughs> because our flesh is so strong. And how many of you agree this is just a challenging area? To not have yourself on your mind all the time. Quick to forgive. Not easily offended. Believe the best of every person. And be willing to adapt and adjust yourself for what other people need. Now, you know, we could come to the other side of it and say, well, you know, the, like I, I had one woman that she actually was a relative and she would call me three and four times a day. And I finally had to tell her this is just not working for me and it hurt her feelings. But, you know, don't, don't pick up the phone and call a busy person just to say, you should see the bird that's in the tree in my backyard. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff, you know, people who just don't have anything better to do we need to think about, even before we pick up the phone and call somebody, we need to think about, okay, I'm going to interrupt them. <laughs> so is this something they really need to hear right now? Or should I just save them one more ringing phone in your house? How many of you know that the world today is a pretty noisy place? If you can find a place to get some quiet, it's a blessing. I get up real early in the morning. I like to get up when it's still dark. And I get my coffee and my cover and my heating pad when it's winter, which it is here now. And I just tell God, I love the quiet. I just love quiet. Some people want some noise going on around them all the time. But I guess if that's you, you're free to have your noise. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Little things make a big difference. Try saying please and thank you. Especially to the people in your own home. Those are the people we tend to take advantage of the most. The ones that we don't have to put up with us. A marriage was ending and the husband said the end started when we stopped putting toothpaste on each other's toothbrush. Little things. Little things can be great. Love is not possessive and it's not controlling and it does not manipulate. Real quick list, and then we're going to have to close. Who do you not enjoy being friends with? <laughs> Those who give you too much advice. Those who try to dominate, those who try to control, those who try to manipulate, those who judge and criticize, they constantly have a criticism for you. And those who are easily angered or easily offended. I tell you, it is tough for me, because I'm pretty open and straightforward, to be around somebody that is extremely insecure, because my type of personality 
I'm not going to be with them 10 minutes. They're going to get their feelings hurt. And I just don't want to just tiptoe around everybody all the time, you know, trying to make sure that I don't hurt their feelings. But I will if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one more area that's actually really funny, and that's how do you communicate other than words, and one is touch. And they say that a woman needs 12 loving touches a day to be really healthy. And I said that in a meeting one time, and a woman looked at her husband and very loudly said, You're killing me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. We love you. More importantly, God loves you, and He has a great plan for your life. Thank you. Onze klantenservice staat graag voor je klaar. Heb je een vraag of wil je een bestelling doorgeven? Bel ons op. Telefoonnummer 026 20 22 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard. Eh, lo hacía escondida de todo, pero yo con 13 años lo pillé. También escuchaba como a veces él le pegaba entonces eh, si bien mi mamá siempre trató de mantener la familia como en secreto esas cosas que no que era fea que no que nadie me pescaba que no había esperanza de mí que mis manos eran feas mi cara me miraba al espejo y lloraba dos veces traté de ahorcarme Well, at Hand of Hope, the outreach arm of Joyce Meyer Ministries, we are honored to work alongside Teen Challenge to help people break the chains of addiction and to see all that God has created them to be. Patricia and Norbert, would you begin by telling us about the need for a home like this here in Chile? Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, the situation with uh, the women growing up in atmospheres where men abuse them. And through that abuse, women are turning to drugs like never before. The men beat them up, they turn them into slaves, they make them do the drug runs. And so they are afraid to, st to step out. They are afraid to go back to their families. It's a nine to 12 month program. We have a curriculum that gives them step by step discipleship in which they can grow in Christ. Once they're mature enough, they are reunited with their children. And when they live that dream of being free from drugs and being free from those things that cause them to turn to drugs, then they can be the mother that they need to be. Jimena, you are such an important part of all of these women's stories because of the way that you play a huge role in their healing. What are some of the particular troubles that women are dealing with? La necesidad de amor, del abrazo familiar, del abrazo de alguien que te ama, lo que buscan, lo que necesitan, lo que transforma. Porque mis manos eh, son instrumentos de Dios. Y esta es mi familia. Ellas son mis hijas. Cuando supe que Él me perdonó, a pesar de que le hacía daño también a la gente al vender droga, eso me, me sentí súper porque alguien me amaba así como yo era. You said before that you couldn't even stand to look in a mirror because of how ugly you felt. 
What do you see now? Cuando estoy trabajando, mucha gente se acerca a mí y me dice, oh, su sonrisa, usted tiene algo especial. A ver qué es especial. Y una vez me detuve y miré el espejo, pero miré mis ojos. Y me dijo, yo hice esto. Y era mi rostro. What an amazing privilege to see the way that these women are blooming, the way that the beauty that God has put in them is now coming out so that they can see it. And when you help a woman, it flows over into her children, into her families, and it changes so many lives. That is what Project Girl is all about, sharing the beauty. And you can do that with us right here in Chile, as we've been talking about, and in many, many places all over the world. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk.